Okay, good morning everybody. Hope everybody is well. Welcome to the boost. Happy for Mon happy Monday for those that are here live. What an honor to be back with you. Last week we were speaking about the idea of just really being in the journey, finding the sparks in everything that you do. Understanding that just we don't fully understand this concept, but it's a powerful concept no matter what, right? The idea that you've got in everything in our lives, some spiritual depth, if you can look towards it, look through the physical. The thing that's in front of you seems like it's mundane, but it's only mundane because we've determined that it's mundane. Right? We've It's only mundane because we said so. But whatever the thing is, it could be elevated. It could be elevated in something that's more purposeful, even if we don't know what the purpose is. Right? That that's that's the idea here. This is the distinction that I hope is clear. That you may not have to know the purpose to know that there's purpose. And once you're in that space where you may not know what the purpose is, but you know that, that it is there, you start to treat the things before you much differently. You may not know what the purpose is of this encounter. But if it came to you, then it's purposeful. And then it could be purposeful. This happens sometimes. You're ever, you're ever like at a party? Does it ever happen to you in life where you go to some party? I don't know, a wedding, whatever. An event. And you're talking to somebody. And as you're talking to somebody, somebody else that maybe you want to speak with more comes in your perif periphery, right? Or the person before you, like like the, the conversation is just going a little bit too like slow, right? Like it's sort of past the, you're in like that weird no man's land of like past like the, uh, the chit chat into like something more, like you've gotten through like life, weather, catch ups, and now you're like, mm, what are we going to do? And the person's interested in continuing, and you got to go somewhere. You got to not like you have to leave that. Like you got to get stuff to do, or you got to go. You got moving on. And you're in that like tough space, and you decide to double down on the person in front of you, like just go into the conversation. Like that person in the periphery who maybe quote unquote more desirable to talk to, they'll have to wait, or you won't talk to them, or wherever you're going, wherever's next. You're not gonna, you know. You're not going to let the person know with your eyes that you're not interested. Did you ever have happen to you like that? Did you ever, did you ever, did ever happen that sometime in the future, you then looked back and appreciated the relationship or saw the value in the relationship? Or later on, you made a connection, someone who knows that person? Did you ever, like, have a conflict with somebody and as opposed to doubling down into the conflict you do the right thing or you hold your tongue and only find out later that the person who you didn't say the wrong thing to knows the person now that you need or you're in a job interview or your kids know somebody and all you know for all you know that thing that person that you have made a small connection to or you prevented a a, a blow up with later on in life becomes more valuable to you ever happen when like if you if you're old enough to have young people that maybe you were nice to or took care of or did something for or mentored or whatever it is now that person is in a position to help your family member your cut your child your nephew your niece and you're like him or when you were younger and your friends from growing up now they have children that are now in positions. You know what I'm talking about? That ever happened where like the situation at the moment was not fully recognizable to how important it is to you into the future. And then when you're in the future, you, it hits you and go, and you have that thought of like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy I was nice to that person. Like I'm so happy. Like, you know, I remember when my, my wife was, um, when I was dating my wife, like we were like about to get engaged. So she she went to Israel 
and she had gone to Israel after her year in Israel, a uh, year in high school, in her gap year, and studied at a seminary there. And she had gone back to visit. Now, one of her teachers that she was close to was my ninth grade Talmud teacher in school. Like the fear that I had, because I know, I remember me in ninth grade. I remember me. And I remember my teacher in ninth grade. I for sure did not leave the impression that I was hoping that my wife would, uh, the, the, the report that she would get from this teacher. I remember the, the feeling. She was getting on that airplane. I was like, oh, no, don't go. She's like, no, I'm only going for like a week. I'm like, no, but just don't tell anybody that, you know, we're about to get engaged. She's like, why? And I'm like, yeah, I, 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 who's your teacher again? Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, he, he moved to Israel after our year in ninth grade. I, I don't know if it's a good idea. I remember like with trepidation getting the call. It wasn't as bad as I thought. But that feeling, who would have thought in ninth grade that the teacher that you were, just, you know, you were torturing would ultimately be, be one of the mentors of your, of your fiancé, right? Who thinks this way? But if you live long enough, you see it. You see all those connections that you weren't appreciative of. How many times have you, if you ever did a project or a business with somebody and it didn't work out, and then like three years later, you circle back to the same thing with the same people. And now it can work out, right? And you think to yourself, you know, I'm so happy that when it didn't work out, I left it in a way where it was proper. I didn't, we, we, we split amicably with good feelings because I'm back together with this person from a business perspective. You know, Harry Truman, I think his best friend was a man, I think Sid Jacobson, if I'm remembering the name right. If not, someone correct me. Harry Truman, I think it was Sid Jacobson, was in business. They had some kind of like convenience store with a Jewish guy. And it broke up and they went bankrupt. And the story is, and this is an incredible story, that at the beginning of the state of Israel, in the, the formation of the modern state, there weren't enough votes in the UN Council for the state. Lots of against, and they needed the United States to vote to approve, to vote for the state of Israel. And the State Department was not interested. And so pro-Israel lobbyists were trying to get into Harry Truman, and they couldn't. And he apparently just said, no more. And he was leaning towards not approving the state. Now, the guy he did business with 20, 40, 30, 30, 40 years ago happened to be a Jewish guy. And even though the business collapsed, they stayed really close. And they, these, the, 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 the Israel delegation went to see this guy and said, can you get us in to see Harry, the Harry Truman? The first president of Israel was in town. And we want him to just meet him. And the story goes that I think Sid Jacobson goes into the White House. Of course, he's, he's welcome. He's Harry's close friend and says, if your hero were here would I, would, and you want to meet and meet with him, would I? And he said, of course, we're best friends. He said, well, my hero is here. He's the president of Israel. He's my hero. The state means a lot to me. You're not even taking the meeting. And Harry Truman famously looked out the window in the Oval Office and said, fine, I'll meet him. And they met. And two hours later, Harry Truman emerged from the meeting and said, there's no way we're not back in the State of Israel. And pushed the State Department to, to approve. And the rest is history. I mean, there's a million more details, but that's the idea. You think Sid Jacobson would have thought in a million years that his business partner in a failed business in the middle of nowhere would ultimately be the connection that he needed 
to be one of the the messengers, one of the the people involved in the formation of the state of Israel? You crazy? No way. But that's how it works. Everything has purpose. Everything has purpose, even if we don't know the purpose. And when every relationship has purpose, then you don't have to know why there's purpose to your relationship to know that there is purpose in your relationship. And when you look at people from the perspective of this, there's a purpose to this relationship. I don't know it. I may never know it. But it's there. It's for sure there. They didn't come into my life because... They weren't born to me because I, w they w I wasn't born to them because they didn't marry my sibling because I didn't end up in this school because I didn't end up in this job because if, if, if I can start to pull away the randomness of this world which by the way is destroying us we'll talk about this maybe in another show how this buy-in to randomness is really the underlying cause of a lot of our unhappiness. And you're seeing a society that has bought in lock, stock, and barrel randomness, and you're seeing a lot of unhappy people. Because purpose is how we live our lives. Purpose, meaning, logotherapy. Ask Viktor Frankl. I don't have to know what the purpose is to know what this purpose. And if you've lived, you've seen this. But it just becomes invisible again when the next time you see somebody but if we just can put the pieces together and well, wait, wait a second why do I gotta get 10 examples of how the person in front of me is the most important person in the world who knows what that means who knows how that'll play out let me just stay in this conversation this has purpose you think this way and everything you do in life you treat the things that you do in life much differently alright we'll talk about this alright everybody have a great day and with the help of God, I look forward to seeing you in tomorrow. Have a great day. Living on a lifeline, the world doesn't ever seem to change. Looking for the sunshine, but you're caught up in the rain. It's like your eyes are wide open, but you cannot see. You're watching life pass you by like one, two, three. Walking in destruction, the winds of life blow your vision. All the devastation forever feels like you're on the run. It's time. No one else can set you free. You're locked inside. And only you have got the key.